He was a large, athletic man of a strong constitution, a committeeman, treasurer, assessor, and selectman in Menatomy, Massachusetts, a husband, a father, a grandfather, and the bravest soldier the United States has ever seen. Whitmore is noted for taking a brave and honorable stand in history against the British troops on April 19, 1775. Samuel Whitmore was born in England on July 27, 1695. He lived in Menatomy, Massachusetts, present-day Arlington, Massachusetts, with his two wives by the names of Elizabeth Spring and Esther Prentice, whom he married after the death of Spring, three sons, five daughters, and many grandchildren. Whitmore was a true family man. Besides that, Whitmore played a great and important role in his community. It has been recorded that Whitmore was appointed to a committee to draft a petition for lands and estates belonging to a neighboring town to be integrated into a separate district. He is also cited as being a member of a committee that regulated the schools in his community. Whitmore is remembered as a prominent citizen of the 2nd Precinct in Cambridge where he lived, and for being a progenitor of a great portion of the Whitmore clan that lives there to present day. In addition to his great societal contributions, Whitmore was a decorated military veteran and had a great pride in his country. He fought first in the French and Indian War in 1754, aiding in the capture of the French stronghold, Fort Louisburg. Whitmore found himself still fighting at 64 years old. He strongly believed in American independence and had a great hope that his descendants would be able to enact their own laws and not be subject to a distant king. Whitmore goes down in history as a brave soldier with a deeply rooted pride in America, but he is best known for his bravery on April 19, 1775. It was on April 19, 1775 that the American Revolution officially began. The American Revolution was a result of the imbalance of power between the 13 colonies and Great Britain, their mother country. Great Britain imposed unfair laws on the colonies to maintain control over the colonists and denied them representation in the British Parliament. The laws created by Parliament seemed to only benefit the British at the cost of the colonists. The colonists were angry and organized violent protests. These protests ultimately led to the start of the Revolutionary War on April 19, 1775 at the Battles of Lexington and Concord. On this day, General Gage, an infamous British general, had a plan to send British soldiers quartered in Boston during the night to Lexington to capture Sam Adams and John Hancock, two very important players on the American side, and to Concord to seize gunpowder and weaponry. When the American spies learned of Gage's intentions, William Dawes, Dr. Samuel Prescott, and Paul Revere rode on horseback throughout the countryside to warn the people that the British soldiers, also known as the Regulars, were coming. When Whitmore's wife heard of the anticipated arrival of the Regulars, she and her family closed themselves in one of her son's homes to wait out the fighting and violence that was sure to ensue. Samuel Whitmore, on the other hand, patriarch of the Whitmore clan and spirited American revolutionary, had other plans. Whitmore, at almost 82 years of age, decided to take matters into his own hands. Historians have said this was not unusual at the time. While the militia company in New England ranged in age from 16 years old to 50 years old, older men, generally passionate veterans with a strong sense of patriotism and duty, acted as guerrilla fighters fighting when they felt necessary or threatened. This was extremely common in the early stages of the Revolutionary War. Historian J. L. Bell is quoted as saying, For most of those men, the battle was taking place close to their houses, so they viewed their actions as defending their property and their liberty. Whitmore was awakened in the early hours of the morning when he heard the regulars marching towards his farm. He leaped out of bed and grabbed his musket, dual pistols, and sword. He was ready and willing to fight his greatest enemy, even as an elderly man. The event that followed was known as one of the most unequal duels of the war. While hiding behind a small stone wall, Whitmore shot at the British grenadiers of the 47th Regiment of Foot. 
he succeeded in killing two soldiers and gravely injured a third. However, the regulars not only outnumbered Whitmore, but were younger, more skilled fighters, and had better weaponry. The old American veteran didn't stand a chance. He was shot in the face at point-blank range, struck in the head with a musket butt which knocked him to the ground, and then bayoneted 13 times in the chest and face. Even while being brutally attacked, he continued attempting to reload his musket on the ground and get back on his feet. He was left for dead by the brutal regulars. Whitmore was rushed to the nearest doctors at Cooper's Tavern, an establishment close to his home, but there was little hope to save him. The doctors expected him to die within a few hours, and they invited his relatives to come and say their final goodbyes. They said that this act of bravery would be Whitmore's last stand. However, Samuel Whitmore defied all odds. Despite a severely deformed face from the injuries he sustained and the events of April 19, 1775, he lived for another 18 years. When asked by his family if he would do anything differently regarding his encounter with the British regulars, now knowing he could have very easily lost his life, he responded with a simple phrase that exemplifies his brave character and sense of pride in the newly developing American nation. He is quoted as saying, No, I should do just so again. Samuel Whitmore died on February 2, 1793, at 98 years old, an age unheard of at the time, and is buried in the Arlington, Massachusetts Town Cemetery. However, in the words of General Douglas MacArthur, old soldiers never die, they simply fade away. Whitmore lived to see the complete defeat of his greatest enemies and to witness his country, of which he was so proud, enjoy all the blessings of peace and independence. Many years after 1775, a monument was erected at the site of the battle between Whitmore and the regulars to honor his bravery and seemingly impossible feat. In 2005, the Massachusetts Senate enacted a bill calling for a proper observance of February the 3rd, the anniversary of the death of Captain Whitmore. On this day, he will be remembered as the official hero of the Commonwealth, in lasting recognition of his courage, determination, outstanding service, and unique contribution to American independence. Captain Samuel Whitmore is still recognized at the present day as the official hero of the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, and rightfully so, because as the bill also states, most recently, the United States has never had a braver warrior. Samuel Whitmore will forever be remembered for his great pride and service to his country, but most importantly, for his courageous stand against the British on April 19, 1775. In the words of many, you can question the old soldier's tactical judgment in making the stand in the manner in which he did, but you can never question his bravery. <laughs>